the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed it through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body. And so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. We'll draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust I shall not be. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra patominibus, ode covent patis, laudabus e, benedicibus e, adoramus e, glorificamus e, Domine Deus, excelestis, 
we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do to our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they may receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the harsh realities of life that we learn at a young age is what it means to be all alone. Now, whether no one wants to play with us on the playground or sit with us at lunch, or we are always the last one to be picked to be on a team. By the way, one of these days, I'm still gonna form a support group for all of us who are the last ones to be picked. But at any rate, we learn as a child that sometimes we are alone. Now, there's a world of difference, though, from being alone by our choice or being alone by being excluded or no one wants anything to do with us or just no one around. That is why so many people who are homebound can get so easily depressed because very few, if any, people ever come to see them. One of the questions we ask on the premarital test that we give couples that are engaged is whether they can spend an evening alone because we know sometimes that a possessive spouse can cause problems. And so if I was to ask for a show of hands of all of us who felt alone at one time or another, 
I'm sure that almost everyone would raise their hands. But we probably all have that time in our life when we have felt the most alone or all alone like none other. I remember the most that I've ever felt was when I was sent to Rome to study canon law. I had been associate pastor at St. Charles for five years, and when the archbishop told me that I was going to canon law school in Italy, I was kind of excited, but a little scared at the same time. But I'll never forget the day I left back in 1997, and that was back when you could just walk right down to the plane with people, there wasn't security or anything, and a bunch of people from the parish and my mother had all gone to the airport to say goodbye, and it was hard to say goodbye to the people, and so it was, it was tearful. But the excitement of the trip was there at that point, because there was a, a person in the parish who worked for TWA, and they had arranged for me to go first class. And on the international part, that was back in the days when they had those big old TWA 747s, which was like a, a huge four-star restaurant in the sky. Well, I had never flown first class, much less first class overseas, so at that point, I was just kind of looking forward to that. Well, the flight was nice, and the food was great, and I must admit there's a certain camaraderie in first class that you don't get in economy. Well, the plane landed in Rome, and all of a sudden, something hit me. I grabbed my huge big bag that the eighth grade had given me as a going away present that had everything I owned in there, and I walked out of the door, and all of a sudden I realized that I was in this continent of Europe and I did not know one living soul. Well, I mean, I knew Pope John Paul, but he didn't know me. So, <laughs> so I found my way and I took the train to the central station in Rome, which is chaotic on a, on a good day. And so then I tried to walk to find where I was staying. It was in a, in a seminary, but I couldn't figure out the whole money thing because back then it was lira and I was too cheap to spend what I had. And so I decided to walk. Well, that was back before you had cell phones and GPS and all that. So I had to stop literally every block and unfold this big, huge map and try to figure out where I was going. Well, by the time I got there, the place was locked up tight and nobody answered the door. So here I was, here in Rome, not knowing anyone, on these cobblestone streets, dragging my big bag, looking around for a place to stay. Well, finally, I found one. And so I was hungry, so I, I went out to eat. And I went to one of those little sidewalk cafes. And as I looked around, I realized that I was all alone. Everyone else was drinking and having fun and eating and talking. And I was all by myself. And I remember sitting there eating my spaghetti carbonara, just crying like a baby, while everyone kind of stared like, what's wrong with that American guy going on over there? Well, the next day, I found my way back to the Rome train station, where I was to take a train up to Siena to study Italian. Well, finally, I found my train. It was not air-conditioned. It was packed. My big bag got stuck in the door, so I had all these Italians yelling and screaming at me. And it was chaotic. And I could go on and on, but I won't. But the one last thing is when I got to Siena, and I've probably, I know I've said this before, but I had signed up to live with an Italian family so that I could better learn uh, Italian. Well, in my mind, what the family was going to be was their home was going to be a villa out in the middle of a huge vineyard. The mother was going to be like Sophia Loren. There was going to be a big sign that said, Benvenito Padre Ricardo, and uh, that was not the case. Uh, it was an 80-year-old lady that lived in a 300-year-old building that was seven floors up with no elevator, and she did not like three things. She did not like men, she did not like priests, and she did not like Americans. So I struck out on all three counts. Now, there was no internet there in those times. There was no cell phones. So you had to have a, a prepaid phone card to call. So I couldn't even call home very much. Well, I felt more alone than I ever had, and I remember there looking out over the Tuscan hillside, thinking, I'm going to call Archbishop Beltran and tell him this is not going to work. Well, one day I walked into the cathedral and I spent one hour before the Blessed Sacrament. And I started feeling better. Well, the disciples were terrified 
that Jesus was going to leave them all alone. He kept telling him, don't worry, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will send the spirit of truth or the advocate to be with you always. So he says, I will equip you with what you need. Well, that experience in Italy started out really bad, and I thought, you know, I don't know that I'll ever survive. But I discovered one thing that has stuck with me, and that is the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit. That advocate that Jesus promised the disciples became very, very real to me as I faced loneliness like I never had experienced before. I'd been a priest for five years, and I must admit at that point, I didn't visit the Blessed Sacrament very often, rarely prayed the rosary. Now, don't worry, I did pray, but not like I should have. And I realized that while, yes, I felt lonely and terrified, all of a sudden in that prayer time, I realized I was not alone, spending time before the Blessed Sacrament, learning to pray the rosary. Those were things back in the 1980s they didn't teach us in seminary. Well, Jesus left the disciples with the tools to never ever feel alone or abandoned. But they didn't understand all that till much later. Jesus gives us the same tools, the Eucharist, the scriptures, and all kinds of things that sometimes we take for granted. I'll never forget the first time I walked into this little Italian church and went to Mass. I didn't understand a word that was going on, but I knew that it was the Mass and that I was receiving the body and blood of Christ and Jesus would take care of me. I even made friends with the priest who could not speak a word of English and I could speak very little Italian. That experience that I didn't see how I could possibly make it through turned out to be one of the best experiences of my life. Now, Italy is like a second home to me. I was there three weeks ago. I walked all over Rome, spoke to the locals, didn't get lost once and only had to use GPS one time. But that initial time, 20 years now ago in retrospect, I also made some of the best friends I've made in life. But most of all, I rediscovered a very old best friend that even as a priest I had kind of put off to the side and one that would never leave me alone, and that was the Lord himself. It's kind of like that old poem that was written, I think, back in the 70s or 80s. I used to make fun of it and thought it was kind of cheesy, but it really kind of sums it up. It's called Footprints in the Sand. And it's about a man who's walking on the beach and he looks back and he just sees one set of footprints and he feels very lonely. And so the last line of the poem goes, my child, I love you and I will never leave you because during your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was because then that I was carrying you. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may grow in our awareness that Christ is in us 
and see the hand of God in the people and events in our lives and in the created world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all government leaders, that God will inspire them to act justly, listen to the needs of society, and promote the truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the unity of all Christians, that the Spirit of God will heal the misunderstandings and wounds in the body of Christ and lead us to a greater unity of mind and action as we confront evil and work to ease human suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a new spirit in our personal interactions, that we may speak with reverence and gentleness to one another recognizing that we have become sisters and brothers in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an awareness of the interdependence of all life, that we may appreciate our impact upon others and their impact upon us as we make decisions about relationships, the use of our time, and the utilization of our resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, Janie, especially Janie Mate, and those who have died, and no one to pray for them, may they find peace and fullness of life in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer to himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, in the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Bob Sears. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Next weekend is our feeding, uh, monthly feeding of the hungry. And since it is uh, Memorial Day weekend, a lot of people will be out of town. So we do need uh, extra help. So if you can volunteer, uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. Our annual end of school street party will be uh, this afternoon from four to six over on the ball fields in front of the junior high building. If you're interested in advertising uh, in our Sunday bulletin, uh, the ad rep from Trinity Publications will be in our office this week. Also, our new parish council members are Rich Tuey, Carrie Beasley, and Jeff Whitmarsh. And the Knights of Columbus are having their annual developmental disabilities campaign this weekend, uh, where they will be standing out back, taking contributions, and be giving you a Tootsie Roll. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.